Welcome everybody to the live online classes from the Paint Basket. And today we can continuing with lesson two of the still life that we're doing with the pomegranates and uh, the glass and the lamp. So let's go and have a look and see what we're going to be doing. So there, here we have the, um, the lamp, the full thing where we have a nice dark background and that is what we did um, in the last lesson. We finished all that nice dark background and it's all nice and negative. So now we need to go along and wonder now, have a look at these things and let's take and see what planning we can do to make this thing that we don't make any mess ups. Normally what happens, you start from the back and you do the four, come forward, next one forward, so that you have that nice overlapping. And um, what happens is, sometimes, if you know the rules, you know how to break them. So I've given you the rules now for this one here. You start from the dark, from from the light to the dark, in uh, in watercolors, and you usually start from the back. You get the nice overlap, but this time. What happens is if we start and do the lamp and etc., you have there with the, uh, the, the the whites of the glass and also the pomegranate, the edging and all that, is that um, you can easily pick up the background when you're doing coming to the edge of your of your object, and what happens then you start getting. Um, a darker area into the, the light area which you can't get rid of. So I'm going to be working, I'm going to do the pomegranates first and then all the light area and then you can come back with the darker area and then come and then you can very carefully come along and work the edging of the dark against the lighter area. That can be done very uh, um, carefully and successfully as well too. So what we're going to do now is to come and do the pomegranates. And of course the pomegranate is the, the focal point of this one. And normally what happens, I normally leave the focal point to the last. But we're breaking the rule in this particular case. We're coming along and doing the pomegranates. So uh, let's see if is there any queries so far. Any, in what I've just told you. Oh, music, you got it there. The spring has sprung, the grass has riz. I wonder where them bodies is. Well, those are the points. <laughs> there you got it. <laughs> I just couldn't remember it there at the moment. Okay. So let's go over now. Nobody's asking any questions. So let's go over now to the... Um, <clears throat> easel and to the board that we've got and I've zoomed in here you can see here we've done all the, the the background it's nice and dark nice sharp edging so I'm going to start with the main pomegranate and to do that what I'm going to do is I've got a little my little palette that I used last time and as you can see here I've still got a whole lot of the, uh, the, the the thick mix, the dark mix that we use for for the for the for the background, and that I've left in there, for the, so that when we come back at the later stage and we start putting in this background, I've got the same mix that I've got here into there. Although it's if you've kept your um, uh, little swatch. On the side, we've got that. You can always mix it to come in close. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as this one here because you have the glass, and when you look through the glass, that will change the tonal range of the background coming through into this one here. We don't want it exactly the same anyway, otherwise it will merge too much to, uh, together in here. So what I'm going to do is when we're coming along for our um, pomegranate, if you have a look at that one, you can see we have some yellow, we have some orange, 
we have some red. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along here now. I'm going to take a little bit of um, a little bit of yellow, and I'm going to put a little bit here into this one. Put it there. If you're using pan, that's that's fine. Not it's not a problem. It's the same pigment. The one is just made slightly for to, to be slightly wetter. The next one we have is the, some orange, yellow, a little bit of orange. And then we have some red. Let's take out some, some red. Uh, which is uh, this one here. And we're not going to be painting thick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be painting in, in glazing. In other words, thin little glazes through. So, now, with this with the orange, or like this pomegranate, the underlying color is actually yellow for your for your red. And when you do printing, what happens is they use the, the, the yellow color first for lithographic, and then, then they have the, the red, and then they have the blue, and then the fourth one is they, they use a little bit of the black to darken up it. Whoops. It, I didn't, I'll be taking the, get rid of that there. Take a little bit of that and some water. And then I'm going to put a very, just a light glaze over the top. And when we come to that edge there, just be very careful that you don't pick that up. This one here is, is also got the underlying color, so we take a bit of that and just because here you're going to be using smaller brushes. These other ones here, if you do go over with your yellow a little bit inside here, it doesn't over this line. It doesn't matter yet. It's only here we are against the dark that you must be careful so that you don't pick up that into here, which I mentioned before. So we got that. Okay, so while that is still a little bit wet, um, let me just. Do something here quickly. I'm going back onto there. And I'm going to crop a little bit here. Uh, all right, let's get that. Good. So now let's where's my zoom tool here? The new program. Okay, I can use the wheel. There we go. I'm going to put this one into the bottom corner. Okay. Uh, I don't want to cover that. Okay. Right, let's just move this a bit.
I'll move it there. Right. Good enough here at the moment. So that, and just make sure that it's still a little bit damp, because I want to do some wet and wet blending here. And yeah, in the lightest area, in in this area here, I'm going to just lift out a little bit of that. It's gone a little bit too dark, so I'm going to lift, see, lift some of that out here. There we go. So I've got that. Now I'm going to pick up a little touch of orange. In other words, I'm working from the lightest through to the darkest of so the. Picking up a little bit of orange here. And I'm going to start putting that in. And careful on that on this end here. I'll darken that up a bit later on. So first of all. all right, let's leave the top end there because there's some touches of yellow. I don't want the orange to get into there yet. Can we do that? Slowly build it up with a glaze. And a little bit lightly on the edge. I'm going to leave this little area a little bit lighter at the moment. It doesn't matter if there's a, a, a hard edge at the moment, we'll soften that out as we go along. Now I'm going to pick a little bit more orange, and I'm going to slowly build up the tonal ranges here. Take it carefully, don't, don't try and rush. Yeah, see a little bit here first, and then we'll the shadow area will come a little bit later. I'm working in remember this a round object, so you see I'm working in where possible that way. The lines across there like that, and that any lines will still emphasize the roundness of the of, of the the uh, object. Of the subject. You're putting the orange on, but there's still that yellow shine that's coming through from underneath. So take a little bit more orange, slowly build up. Look, taking note of where the darker areas are, the tonal ranges. And when I'm doing these, I'm not using my paintbrush up straight. I'm using it reasonably flat, so that it layers nicely. It's, it, you get a much smoother effect. A little bit in here. We'll come back into that area. That's the most important area, where it's got the, the shine. Keep on watching your reference photo as you work. We're slowly building that up. <clears throat> when you work here, I'm using a very soft brush. And it's a filbert that I'm using here, a nice soft synthetic filbert. Uh, it's a number six. I find this one is very, very handy for the simple reason is that, like that, it's nice and broad. You can turn it, and you can see the tip. You can do quite uh, thin little, little lines. Okay. 
let's see if there's any queries at the moment. No cauliflowers? No, not yet. <laughs> uh, yeah, a, for those that know what a cauliflower is, it's, it's if you're working nice, light with hardly any water, but you had to come with a brush that's loaded up with more liquid and you push it down, what happens is it, 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 it tends to wash the place like a flood and it takes a pigment and pushes it all to the side. So you have a nice big little area here with all the pigment around the side. Uh, I'm very, uh, if you have a look and see when I'm working in here, if I've got any water, uh, uh, if I, uh, dampen my, I dampen my brush, make sure that there's not a big blob. Then I'll come and pick a little bit in there and you can see there's hardly any, any water. I can do that, look, it's hardly even running out. That's, that's the amount of water that I'm using here at the moment. Okay, put that to the side, and let's slowly, slowly darken this up. All the dark, any of the light is coming from this side, so it will be much darker and get lighter and lighter as it goes out, or goes towards the left. Over here, I'm careful because this is going to be a lighter color. That I don't go too far over that. If I, you do go over, don't wait too long. You can always clean clean up and lift off the color. Yeah, I'm still working in using this roundness into here. And when I'm working this area, I'm actually working feather light. I can hardly feel that I'm that I'm actually touching the paper. Let's add a bit more. Now I'm going to start using some some of the red color now. This this one yes is brilliant red. Perhaps you can use cadmium red. That's fine. Another thing is let's check here now. If you feel you've got too much water on the brush, you can regulate that by just touching the tip so that you don't have a big blob at the end. Just touch that takes it that, that ex, excess moisture. Then you can come in and uh, take a little bit here at a time. You can see. Yep, there we go. From there, like that. <clears throat> Let's put that across here. So now we start getting a, a nice ready tint coming through. And still, what you're glazing, some of that yellow, if you look carefully, is still shining through, through the orange. <clears throat> it all is just a little nice wet in wet. Carefully, I'm just get that there's no little white gap. Carefully, toward the edge without picking up the the background color. All this is still wet in wet. Okay, now I'm going to that, and I'm going to come along and bring some of this in.
And I'm using the flat of the brush. See, now I've got all these other colors now. Now I can, you can only judge what you're doing here if you have the other colors around you to be able to to uh, judge your, your tonal ranges. Otherwise, if you're trying to get that just against the white paper, um, your, your, your con you, you need those different contrasts to be able to uh, separate them out and to, I'm uh, just looking for the word, to compare. And slowly, I'm just bringing that in, because you still have that, that color in here. But I don't want it too dark here now. Now I'm coming in here to very carefully I'm touching this in. If you're too hasty, what happens is you can cover that up. And I don't I don't want to cover up this little area here at the moment. You can always come back and work at it. Now if you look against the the insert, and that you can see, this is still much, still not red enough. So now we need to pick up some more of the, a little bit more of the solid color. And work that in now. Across here, touch across here. Don't forget this thing is not 100% round. It's got little imperfections around, so you won't have it even all the way. And here we've got the shadow. We can darken this up as well, too, because we'll later come and add the shadow color over this to form the shadow. Here, yeah, very slowly. Doesn't matter if you have, don't try and get it too smooth because you have um, the, the texture. You need to have some texture. So, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm hardly touching and I'm building up that little texture coming through onto the, onto the pomegranate now. Before I got the head all the nice wet in wet, now I'm starting to build up some texture. Don't worry about this. We're going to come back to that. It's the main thing that we need to do. Now, don't forget, there's also the lights coming from this side. So you'll have the, the outer edge will have a little bit of a lighter color in there. So I'm putting little touches in here. I'm leaving that other edge nice and light there. Now this, I'm starting to give some texture. When you want to do a nice um, realistic painting, you have to be slower than normal. Don't try and rush. Oh, you know what we forgot? We forgot those little hollows inside there. Okay, right, we'll come back to that one. Before I go any further, let's fix that one up. The darker patches, that's easy to put on, but here where we got those little hollows in. See, I've got some nice, nice little texture now coming up here on the on the, on the pomegranate. If it's a bit too spotty, when it's dry, you can come back and just, with a damp brush, just go over it and just merge it ever so slightly. Okay, now we need to fix up that little, those little areas there that I forgot to put in. <clears throat> but that's easy fixed up. I've got a, this is a number three round. And 
Now I'm going to open up a little area here. So I'm going to, with a wet brush, See, before I go any further, let's put the hair dryer on, otherwise I'm going to upset the texture. You don't have to use the hair dryer for too long, for the simple reason is that this layer that we put on is so thin that it, it just it, it takes seconds to dry. Okay, now we need to come along and get as much of this out here as what we can. I'm wetting that in. Dab clean. See, now I'm not picking up any of the other areas outside. Right, we've got another little one down here as well. We don't have to have it exactly at the same place. Let's put it in here. Where it's a little bit darker tone and that will show up even better so let's do that all right let's make it a little bit longer so it's a little bit of a so we don't make it bigger here and a little across there okay and now that's dry let's let's work on this one here so I'm going to pick up a little bit of this dark color. And we have a little bit of the, the shade, the lights coming from that side. So we have, if we sort of give a sharp little line here. So we pick up that little hollow. Just make it a little bit irregular on the inside. You've got another one across here. What you want there, you want a nice sharp edge, hard edge around this little area here. Take a little bit more. And that's going to be a little bit longer down here and up there. So there we're starting to put a nice little, little hole inside there. And you know that that yellow tint. Time to take a little bit of this. A little bit bright, but we'll put the yellow orchid in a bit later. So take a little touch of that. And carefully put that in. When that's dry. I'll, I'll add a little bit of a highlight across here. But if you look at the other one, this hollow has gone in a little bit on this one. So there's a... Take that, a little bit more. I'm using a damp brush. Don't put too much water on, otherwise that blob is going to really be working very really fine little area here. It's a very thin little line here. Across there. I'm going to just darken this piece up a bit. Give me that nice, quite a bright light, so you need that area a little bit darker. Okay, let's... I've got three of them there, so let's add a... Where are we? Put another one. Where should we put another little one? Let's put him down here. Just a tiny little one, just to make it three. I always find three is a nice combination. Okay, let's just wait till that dries a little bit. Now this time, the shadow is more on the top because the light's coming from this side. They need that more on the top end here now. Okay, 
that gives you the direction. Actually, we can actually put that one also a little bit higher up there. Okay, I think now, let's go along and start adding some of the shadow onto there. And believe it or not, I'm going to be using some of this dark green. Can anybody tell me why I'm going to be using some of the dark green to shadow the red? Let's see. If somebody can tell me why. Nobody coming yet? Okay. Nobody coming. All right, I'll tell you. It's the opposite. It's the compliment. Uh, right, we're putting on to shade it, but why am I using the green? There we go, Daniel. It's the opposite color. When you want to, sh if you've got a red and you want to shade it down, use a tiny little bit of the complementary color into that, and that will shade it down. If you've got a green and uh, and you want to shade that down, you use a little bit of red into it, and it'll add it. Too much will upset the whole thing, but all you need is just a little bit. So here I'm going to just a little bit here. And if I'm going to test it in the deepest shadow. Before I go any further, so that looks good. So now we now I need to have a look and see where the shadows are, and I can build them up. Always start lighter than you think you can, and then go slowly towards the dark. Now I'm using the flat of my brush, and not too much water, for the simple reason is I'm, I don't want to lift up the, the pigment that's dry underneath. So I'm using the, and there's all these little colors as well too, you've got a little patch here, very, very light, don't be heavy handed. But all these nice little textures coming in. Don't forget, we're busy here. We try to do as as much as re, uh, realistic as what we can. Dumping those in, so you can see the red is now starting to come up. It's still quite not red enough, so we'll add some more red in a bit later. But now, softly, just going to bring that across, and. Look up here, it goes from light, slowly darker and darker and darker and darker. So here, I'm just sort of toning it down a little bit. Less paint on the brush. In other words, I start the darkest area, and then slowly work towards your lightest. Don't start here, otherwise it's going to be too dark. Now we have this underneath here. Slowly build it up. And there's a little patch here too, which is a little bit of a hollow. It'll pick up a bit of a shadow. There's a bit of a hollow there. Wet my brush, take most of the moisture off, go back into here, and I'm, I'm not digging into the thing, I'm digging into the little bit on the side, and I'm using the flat of the brush, and I can see against here whether I'm picking up too much or not. Starting at the darkest end again. Let's 
slowly build up. I'm not trying to get it too smooth now. I'm working with texture. And you can see I'm dabbing it, and it gives me that nice little texture color as well, too. Little touch here. All right, now I'm going to go even a little bit darker in this little area here. Again, brush, excess moisture, keep a little bit more of the green. And this time I'm dabbing it on. I think what I must do, let's start it to pick up a little bit. So if it starts to pick up, use your good old hair dryer. Now it doesn't pick up the background so easy, so let's take a bit more of that and go into some of these areas where there's some real nice dark shadows. And I'm just not painting, I'm dabbing on this time. And that gives me a little texture areas. Just dabbing them on. Right along this edge here is nice and dark. Nice and dark here because this is going to be a nice little light area coming through. So you have that contrast between the light and the dark. Okay, now I'm going to bring a little touch of very, a little bit of texture in this area here, so it's not just a, a blank blank. In other words, it's not white, complete white paper. So maybe, let's see, I'm adding a little touch more yellow into this. Okay, now I'm going to take some, some more of the, of the red. Regulate the water here. <clears throat> I'm going to carefully just glaze over some of the areas where it's really nice and red. And I'm working feather light. Okay. Now I'm going to use a smaller one. Now let's go up into the, the 
top end of the uh, of the pomegranate. <coughs> and there's some some orange, a little touch of orange in here. I'm putting the darker pieces in here, and then I'm going to put these all this, some shadow areas. Take some yellow. Green. They have a little crack that's comes all the way down here. So let's put that in. Have the edges there to give it some nice... Uh, it's been torn open and not actually cut open. And while I've got this on here, we've got a whole lot of little... extra little spots that come in. All the little imperfections, it's starting to get old. Okay. Take a little touch of the orange. And slowly just blend that in. It's not bright yellow, so I'm going to tone that down. <clears throat> right, let that dry. And let's put a basic color of this one. Let's see. We're not going to have time in the hour to finish that one, so let's go and put the basic color of this lot in here so that we can work on that one and this lot here in, in the next lesson. So now I'm going to take a little brush here again, and the, the actual board itself is a, is a yellow color, so let's take some yellow, use it at the base. And then it's got a light orange to it. Now we've got the base. I'm not going to work into this base of the of the glass. So at this stage, we're going to work this little area here. Now I'm going to work around the the edge of all these little all the little pups. I hope you've gone along and um, sort of deepened them up a little bit with pencil. Um, they're not too soft. When we start working with these ones here, you're going to need to see where those outlines are. And even if you worked with pencil, it's going to disappear. And let's take some, get all that in here.
See, this is where this uh, filbert comes on to its own, where you can turn it on its edge and you can get right into those little corners. Not so easy with a normal flat brush. Okay, so let me take this one. Okay. I need a little touch of yellow ochre. Well, this is, before I do that, let's add the little orange tone to it. It has got a bit of an orange tone in areas. not pure yellow. So let's go over and add a very light orange into that so it still retains the, the, the yellow under, under color. I'm just looking to see if there's any any uh, queries yet. Okay, not so much at the moment. Looks to me everybody's just watching along. As you can see, I'm not using my <laughs> painting along at my usual speed. Okay, what I can do, we still have a little bit of time, let's add some of this and we leave the inside of that one for later, so I can take a little touch of the orange. And work here on this, on this skin. more yeah on this think of it a little bit of red. Dab that nicely into that corner along the edge. I'm putting the base color in now. And come, come back and uh, <clears throat> and work on that when we do work on this one here. But while I've got this here, I'm going to add some of that shadow in, so I'm going to take this, some, some more of this green and start adding some of the shadow in here. And do that. <clears throat> then there's also a bit of a shadow on this side.
I'm not finalizing the shadow, I'm building up the shapes first. This part here is going to be all in deep. You can see that all in deep shadow. Let's work on that little piece there. That's it. Just blocking in, and all this helps to, at the later stage when we come in, to finish all the rest. <clears throat> we got that. All right, let's darken up this little shadow here on this one. A little touch of water. Room is always darker, closer, and as it, the shadow disappears towards away from the object, it gets lighter and lighter because of the more light that's reflected around it. So let's now it's from we will we will work on this one and darker, but what happens is that it's going to be a little bit darker in here. And then light out. So you can see here darker, and we get some shadow out there. Just need to finish off this other little bit. You need that. Ooh. See, I didn't check my water amount on the, my brush. And I made a blob. And do as I do, do as I say. Yeah. These ones is missing. And let's add him, add him in quickly because I want to finish this one off before we sign off. I'm going to add a little, lift some of that out here, only a little bit. in the shadow area. It's an orange in there. Lift out here, I want to bring some of this yellow in. Make a bit of yellow. Here we go. Okay, 
Let's have a look here. Almost done, almost done. I'm going to do a little check. Who's been, who's been going along with me? Who's been going? Who's been painting? Anyway, I believe we're just about finished now anyway. I think you're most probably just gone. Right. Daniel, lovely. Maybe you can put your what you've been doing up on the on the forum. Uh, right, is everybody happy? Something else that I need to do that you would like to see me do before we sign off on the pomegranate? Okay. Okay, so what do we do? <coughs> the next class, <coughs> we all this will be finished, and we will be working up here on on this area. Then we start getting all this area done, and uh, hopefully making a start already on this one. And then once we come into here, oops. Let's go on to the main picture. There we go. Once, once, once we've got onto the um, finish the bowl, we'll then start on the on the lamp, the tall one and the glass. And then we do, when we've done that, we'll do the other glass. And uh, then we'll continue with the cloth. So it'll be another two or three lessons before we finish this one here. What I want to do is I want to really take my time and do it properly so that when you've got yours, you can see it's, it can be different to what I normally do in the, in the other classes. This time I'm taking my time because we want to make it a masterpiece. And I'm sure that you, all yours are going to be masterpieces as well. So uh, I'm going to sign off, and then I'm going to answer some any other questions after that. So from me, until the next class, keep well, and ciao for now.